2. 2 p.m. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're filming the 2023 Kia Niro EV Premium Plus. And if you see the title, it says we have three available. And that is not a lie. It's not clickbait. It's bait. true. It's true. They're actually here too. Physically, I think this is a real car. Let's check. Give it a good knock. Yep, it's, it's real. real. <laughs> so this vehicle is showcased in Cityscape Green. However, we also have two available in the steel gray color if you like a more classic gray look. Um, stunning color, it's more like a silverish gray than a dark, dark gray, which is nice. Mm -hmm. We've already filmed out on our channel if you want to take a look at it in person though. So as always, this is a live video. We go live every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we go live for three different reasons, Charlotte. So reason number one is for those of you who own a Kia or a Hyundai vehicle, we want you to be the own experts on your own vehicle. So we like to do these videos to act as a mm -hmm. more fun owner's manual for you. The second reason we do these videos is that if you're considering purchasing a new vehicle or a new to you vehicle, we'd love it if you considered Kia or a Hyundai as a brand because they are not your mama's cars. They are totally <laughs> different <laughs> from where they were 10 15 years ago and i think you'd be really be impressed if you checked them out third reason of course is that if you are in ontario and you're looking to buy a new vehicle we want to put you in it so we have three stores in our dealer group we have Burford Kia. That's where we film every day. That's where me and Charlotte work. We're physically here, just like those three vehicles. We also have Brantford Hyundai, which is 10 minutes down the road in Owen Sound Hyundai. So if you want to get into the Hyundai or Kia of your dreams, let us know. We want to help you out with that. If you live in Ontario, Canada, yes. by the way. <laughs> Disclaimer. So like I mentioned earlier, we go live every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Each and every single day, we film either a brand new Kia or Hyundai vehicle. But we also do a couple fun and exciting mm -hmm. tips, tricks, and a whole bunch of other things. If you stay tuned for this week, we'll have a bunch of extra videos from our Drive Festival experience. Woohoo! So on the weekend, me and Charlotte got to attend. It was so much fun. I'll, I'll save you the details. You guys have to watch the videos. It's so much fun. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. So usually we show how to join a live. Should we do that today? Let's do it. Okay. So if you want to catch our next live video, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Kia Hyundai channel on YouTube, all you have to do is go to either the home tab or the live tab. And you'll see we have today's video showcased with this red live icon. All you have to do is click on it. It'll load you in like a regular YouTube video would. But the difference is you're watching us in real time. So if you fall down, mess up, say stuff wrong, you'll see it. It's pretty bad. All right. And then on the right over here, we have our live chat box. That's where you guys will go to ask us questions. Let us know what you think or just say hello. Let's get into the car. All right, so for the Nero EV in 2023, they completely redesigned it inside and out. They even gave it a new powertrain. So we now have a 64.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion polymer battery powering this vehicle. It is front wheel drive and you get 201 horsepower with 188 pound feet of torque. You also get 407 kilometers of rated range. And then when you move up to the premium plus trim, which is the middle trim here in Canada, you also get a heat pump integrated into your vehicle. This is great because it's going to help with range in the colder winter months. So you'll see probably much better than 407 kilometers for a majority of the year. I'm gonna turn on the headlight system just so you guys can see what our front end looks like with everything engaged. You'll notice we have LED daytime running lights, but our main headlight unit is a halogen bulb. So we'll take a closer look. What's really nice about this is you get the sharp brightness of the LED, but you get a bit of heat coming from the actual halogen. Um, still very bright, still have great seeing potential at in dark roads, <laughs> wherever you're driving. Now looking at the design or aesthetics of the front grille, we have again a flat finish for your grille itself, but it is three dimensional. So of course no real air intake, but I don't know if you guys can feel that or hear that. A little ASMR moment, almost like a honeycomb type style. It looks very, very nice. And our charge door is right in the very center. Give it a push if the vehicle is unlocked and it'll open for you. And cool thing about this, the car's still wet, we just washed it. But we have an LED light in here. Great if you are plugging in your vehicle at nighttime, you can actually see what you're doing. This green light over here is your charge status indicator. So it's gonna show me that we're at a full charge right now. It's a little bit under, but it's high enough that it reads as a full charge. And you have your charge now button. So if you do schedule a charge time with this vehicle, but you decide to override it, you can press that and it'll charge instantly. You can AC charge and DC charge with this vehicle, and your charge times are about an hour from 10% to 80% on a DC charger. So not bad at all. Close that up. I think style-wise, the Nero looks much more 
handsome <laughs> for the 2023 redesign. I absolutely love this green color. It's very sophisticated. I uh, can't say I love what Kia's done in the past with their greens. If you're looking at the lime green Kia Soul, this is definitely a more sophisticated modern green. Looks stunning. Now for the wheels, we have 17 inch alloys. These are um, EV specified alloys. So they're gonna prioritize um, airflow and minimize air resistance, giving you better range on your vehicle, better efficiency. Style wise, the vehicle looks stunning. Uh, I do like the addition of these almost C-shaped turn signal repeaters. Again, great safety feature. Then if we look on the flip side to the actual mirror portion, you'll see we have blind spot detection on this vehicle. So in most vehicles, or a lot of our older vehicles, um, that would just light up to let you know there is a vehicle in your blind spot, or it may beep at you. They've taken it one step further to actually include a collision avoidance. So if there is a car in your blind spot and you indicate a turn either to the left or right, it'll warn you. And then if you keep turning and it senses the risk of a collision, it'll avoid said collision. All right, this is my favorite part of the new Nero, and that is this Aeroblade pillar. So style-wise, I think it looks great on the vehicle, but it actually lets airflow right downforce, but downforce, baby. <laughs> it's about that airflow, baby. <laughs> All right, and then another thing they added for the Kia Nero in 2023 is a power lift gate. This was never an option in the past. It's great that they added it in. You can only get it on the premium plus trim and above. Great feature. I mean, it makes your life very easy. Kia also has a great uh, feature tied into a smart power lift gate that allows you to walk up to it, wait here for a couple seconds, and as long as the key is on you, it'll open up automatically. This means if you have a bunch of stuff in your hands, you don't have to drop it down, you don't have to kick a foot out, it'll just open right up for you. Now let's open it up again, because we gotta show you all this cargo space. So again, with the redesign, they made this vehicle much bigger. There is so much room in the trunk here. I will add the actual dimensions into the description once this video is posted, but you can see, major increase from last year. Now our rear seats are reclined a bit further than usual. However, if they're more straight, you'd have plenty more space. And we have already done, uh, full, done. we've already folded down our left side. So you can see we get a 60-40 split. Each rear seat does have car seat tethers. Then underneath this floorboard, we do have a little bit more space and your tire mobility kit. All right, also point out our level one charger. So all of our EVs and plug-in hybrids come with a level one charger. This is great to keep in your car. Um, that way if you ever go on a long road trip and you're not sure about charging, you're going away for the weekend, you have somewhere to plug in your vehicle. All right, another addition to the premium plus trim are these rear parking sensors. So along the back bumper here, you can see it's color coded with the paint color and it's color coded with the bumper. So no weird black spots on your vehicle. Uh, but other than that, they actually do beep when you approach an obstacle. So if you're reversing and there's a car behind you or a fence, your vehicle will beep inside to let you know you're close to an obstacle. On top of that, there's also a great feature called rear collision, rear cross traffic, traffic collision avoidance. Wow, that is such a word. Um, that your vehicle will let you know if there's a car coming from either the left or right side. And if you keep backing up, it'll break for you to avoid a collision while reversing. It's great because this is a smaller vehicle compared to giant vans or giant trucks that you may not be able to see past if you are in a busy parking lot. And then I'm just gonna go to the front again and talk about a couple more safety features before Charlotte takes it away on the interior. So, now this okay. isn't really a safety feature, but we got a solar windshield, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Rear privacy glass as well, so if those windows look tinted, it's because they are. And um, in our windshield, that's why I brought up it's solar, we have a camera right in the very center that picks up the lanes ahead of you. So out, as you're driving, <laughs> it's gonna let you know if you're starting to part either on the left or right side and we'll give you a beep. You can turn that off if you're not a fan of it and have it just assist you. So that brings us to our next feature which is called lane follow assist. It'll see the guidelines ahead of you and actively steer for you. It's not gonna make a full left or right turn but it'll keep you centered. It's great to use with your cruise control which by the way, this vehicle has smart cruise control stops you um, and keeps you at a safe distance from the car ahead of you. All right, Charlotte, I'll let you take it away on the inside. All right, it's my turn. And this way, as we come around to the side, you guys can also peep the lovely roof racks that this vehicle does have. Oh yes, <laughs> don't worry. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the driver's side door. So as you can see, we are obviously going to have our mirror controls. We're gonna have our window controls with a driver express automatic window in the front and then automatic windows for the passenger and for the back seat. And something you're gonna notice in this vehicle is there's going to be a lot of piano black. Do with that information what you will. You can see that we have it all along the side 
but I think it does add a good contrast. Um, having the same color but just one different finish I think is great. And we have a ton of speakers in this vehicle. I love that we already have one integrated up at the top and then also on the bottom. From here, you'll be able to get a good look at the seats. So for your driver's seat, you do have an eight-way power adjustable seat, and that is gonna be a combination of synthetic leather and also cloth. I am hopping on board of the trend of having the seats made of two different textures because I find, uh, first of all, I think it looks a little bit sportier, but also cloth keeps you in place a little bit more than leather. Leather's a little bit slippery, so if you uh, wanna drive this vehicle in a very spirited way, it's gonna feel a little bit more spirited for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's Pat and Evie in the back. Oh, hi, baby. She's probably just here to tell you she has a full diaper. <laughs> That's my baby. I'm so, I love her. Can you tell these videos are live? <laughs> we get easily distracted, me especially. <laughs> okay, so now that we are seated in the Nero, the first thing I like to point out is that we, of course, have a vent for your driver, so that way you're getting um, some airflow coming up towards you. Also, I've been mentioning this whenever it uh, comes up, but we have our brightness adjuster, our automatic tailgate control from the front, and your traction control, but this is actually angled towards the driver about 10 degrees. So in previous models of the Nero, specifically the 2020 comes to mind, it was actually angled away. So I think by doing that, it's a little bit more convenient for the driver as well. Okay, that's gonna be for that one side of the vehicle. <laughs> Taking a look at what we see overall is you'll see that we have two 10 and a quarter inch screens and they are all framed together. That way it gives the appearance of a much bigger screen without actually being, you know, the 12.3 inch screen. Your steering wheel for the Nero this year, we do have a heated steering wheel on this trim. It is leather wrapped as well. And over here on this side is you're gonna have your driving control. So accessing smart cruise control, lane keep assist and lane follow assist like McGabby had mentioned. And then on this side, you are going to uh, be able to access your media control. So volume, channel surfing, uh, changing the different modes, and also using your voice assistant as well. <laughs> you may have noticed it, because there's a lot to talk about on the steering wheel, is why wouldn't EV have paddle shifters? That seems a little bit odd, but what these actually do is you can use them to adjust the eye pedal or the amount of regenerative braking that your vehicle can have. On the steering wheel as well, <laughs> there's so much to talk about for the steering wheel. You also have your drive modes, so you are able to cycle between your different drive modes, of course. Eco mode is going to put the vehicle in the most uh, efficient or range, assist range efficient mode. Normal is going to be like any other, and then sport is going to give it a little bit more of a sportier and aggressive response as well. Mm -hmm. That was a lot to go through. <laughs> what happens if you hold it down? If you hold it down? Let's take a look. Oh, baby, you go into snow mode. That's right, you thought we didn't have terrain modes on this vehicle. Well, we've got one, we've got snow mode. And what that does is usually in combination with uh, traction control is it's going to, ah, uh, you know the word I'm trying to avoid, but I feel like I'm gonna have to say it. You have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> you're putting it in snow mode it's going to work in conjunction with your traction control to reduce the amount of slippage depending on the surface that you are driving on so for this vehicle it has it spe specifically equipped for snow <laughs> no snow slippage no in the snow Nero slippage <laughs> all right I'm gonna join Charlotte on the passenger side and we'll go through everything else all right that was a long walk hey hey <laughs> Welcome to my Nero. It's not mine. It's spacious. It could be yours. Yes. <laughs> it's super spacious, especially uh, when you take a look at the headroom. I'll show that. I guess we'll work our way from uh, top to bottom today. But look at the amount of headroom I have. Um, and I think that largely comes from the overall shape of the cabin for this vehicle. <laughs> if we take a look at, the, look up at the top, you can see we have some nice lights. They are bulbs. And then this is going to be your giveaway that this vehicle can be equipped with Kia Connect. You do have your rear view mirror, nothing special there. Except it's Charlotte. Just a rear view mirror. <laughs> and then we can take a look at the screen. So like I said, this is 10 and a quarter inches and we can go to our EV specific menu. And of course this is an EV, so it's going to have it. And this is gonna show you the percentage of battery that we're at, um, the, our nearest uh, charger and then also the range potential. Now this vehicle, it's only at 89% and it's rated for 404. So obviously if it's gonna be charged fully to, uh, to 100%. 100%, you're gonna see a little bit over that. So that's our gasometer over there <laughs> when it comes to range. And it's all gonna depend on how you drive the vehicle. <laughs> Lots of icons here available on the screen, of course. Kia Connect, as I mentioned, media, so you can see a quick little through. 
this. So what can you do with Kia Connect? So Kia Connect, that's a great question. Why don't we click on it? So, oh, this doesn't really give us that much, but <laughs> you can adjust your settings. But what Kia Connect you can do with it is you're able to take a look at where your vehicle is parked. It'll save the location. Also, you are able to remote start it as well and uh, have a little bit of greater input on what the cabin conditions are going to be like. With an EV, you can also, um, I believe you can set it for battery preconditioning. I think that was new though. I haven't used it yet myself. Um, which is a great feature to have, especially when it is winter and this vehicle having a heat pump, that's something you're definitely going to want to utilize. Mm -hmm. So I love Kia Connect. I really do, truly do. I need to set it up on my new demo. Moving, continuing to move downwards is we do have a digital screen here. So this is going to be dual for climate control and then also media controls. I always like to have mine set to climate because I'm able to access media controls from my steering wheel. So here's climate. You can see that we, it's all digital. And then also, um, if you want a little bit more for your map, navigation, um, radio, media, setup, everything like that. This does have the capacity for a wire, wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well, which you can see because we have a lovely USB right here in the center. Next to it, a USB-C, a 12 volt, and beneath it, our wireless charger. No one should have a dead phone in this car. No one should have a dead phone. There is absolutely zero excuse because you don't even need a cord or anything like that. <laughs> Lots more piano black. You're going to see everything is going to be uh, framed in. We do have a push to start and a shift by wire in the center. And you can peep a little bit of funky lighting in the center there. Ooh la la. I know. Also over here. Mm hmm Ambient lighting. We love to see it. And then as far as comfort features go, you can see that we have heated seats the heated steering wheel that I mentioned earlier before, auto hold, and then this is gonna be the button for your parking sensors, which Gabby showed us on the vehicle. So if you would like them to stop beeping, you can simply turn them off. <laughs> and then the button that has the P and the camera, that's gonna take you straight to your rear view camera as well. And you can see that we do have different areas. It is pointing a little bit awkwardly right now. Oh no, I thought it was up for a second, but no. No. Nope. <laughs> it's just the grate. The grate was throwing me off. I call that the hitch camera. If you do put a bike rack or anything on your car and you need to back it up close to a wall, this will show you your rear bumper and exactly how much room you have. Um, almost like a top-down view, which is quite cool. Which is great. Mm -hmm. Last up on here is you're going to have your electronic parking brake and then your cup holders. I saw a video today asking if this was good engineering or bad engineering. For any vehicle that has these type of cup holders, I personally think that it is good engineering, especially if you need to adjust the size, if you want something a little bit more <laughs> snug, or if you're not putting a drink in here. So yeah. I personally think it's good engineering. If it was motorized, I'd be like, oh, that's questionable because that would be expensive to replace, but it's not motorized, so. Ooh, Arthur just said, if you don't like saying slippage, you can say wheel spin instead. Wheel spin. Great word. Bring we're, that into the repertoire. We're definitely going to forget <laughs> that, though. In the next video tomorrow, we're going to say slippage. <laughs> For those of you who may want to take a look at what the center console is going to look like, it is relatively deep, um, about the depth of my hand. It's not very large, uh, but that is because you do have a little bit of coverage, additional coverage from the armrest that covers here for privacy, if that's something you're looking for. All right, I'll show the glove box. Anything else you want to add when it comes to the, the interior? Yeah. Um, I will say if you're comparing this to the previous body style Nero, there is a lot more room here. So just width wise, feet, everything. There's... Oh yeah, you don't even reach the end. No, I can't. <laughs> that's me slipping completely out of my seat. To get <laughs> slippage that is a lot of slippage um seriously so much space in this vehicle even for the rear seats there's definitely been a large increase of space yeah and i actually have uh fully reclined my seat or not reclined but moved the base back that way when we show you guys the back of the vehicle you'll be able to see so let's head back there i think um uh, sorry to ask but how tall are they information will give oh me an idea how Myself, my family, my friends would fit. So Charlotte, how tall are you? I'm about 5'2", five, 5'3". Five, I am wearing heels today, so that gives me a little bit more on the uh, vertical. <laughs> um, I'm probably an inch taller than Charlotte, and I'm also wearing heels. Oh my gosh, our floor is so dirty. I'm so Yeah, sorry. don't show the floor. I guess I did show it uh, with the seat that was back. Okay. So again, with the seat base fully moved back and a recline in the seats, you can 
get a sense of where my knees are and where my feet are with this vehicle, I can still go forward it a little bit more. Um, so if you are taller than me, it's not hard to be taller than me, you're still gonna have a relatively comfortable ride. Of course, if you have someone who's gonna be, you know, 6'5", 6'2", anything like that, you're gonna wanna offer up the passenger seat to your uh, passenger. Yes. <laughs> guess can that's you, what we're going with. <laughs> can you put your hand above your head just yeah. to show? So that's how much headroom there is. I noticed when I'm filming it because of the color of the, um, oh my gosh. The side? The headliner, it, it's hard. It looks like it's curved in and it's much shorter. Yeah. But no, there's so much headroom there. I'm trying to sit up too. <laughs> Stretch, girl. I have good posture. <laughs> All uh, right. What's on the backs of the seats? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so when it comes to privacy again in the back, you can see that we do have two pockets and they are kind of like a plastic-ish material and they have some stretch with Velcro. So a combination of the leather and net, we get the stretch, but also the coverage for privacy. Vents in the back seat, that way you can still get airflow, nice circulation back here. Two, not one, but two USB-Cs. So again, no one in this phone should, or no one in this car should have a dead phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not going to happen. And then in the middle seat as well, we have two cup holders, also an armrest, and we have the same combination of synthetic leather and cloth in the seats back here. Mm -hmm. Something I love about Kia is these rear seats look identical to the front seats. There is no um, shortage on styling. They did not forget about the rear seat passengers. They it's still an have, experience for everyone yeah. in this vehicle, no matter where you're sitting. Absolutely. Oh, one thing I will show is for those of you who may be concerned about having someone who's taller, because this is an EV. We actually just got a question about that. My brother is oh. six foot eight. Can he fit in this car? Good question. I don't. I feel like I don't want to say yes or no because I'm not six foot eight. <laughs> but something that will be good if your brother is in this vehicle is there's no um, center hump. So if you have a vehicle that is not an EV, you know, you're going to have um, that hump here in the center and it yeah. can be larger depending on if it's all wheel drive or not, but it's completely flat. So no matter where you are back here is your knees are not being more elevated than they need to by just being on the floorboard. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I always like pointing this out whenever we have a vehicle like this. Oh. These backrests of the seat where your headrest is double as a hanger. So jackets, bags, whatever you need. If you don't want them on the ground, hang them up here. Works perfect. And just a beautiful back seat area. Again, there's some shiny black. Actually, this is more matte, but a darker um, accent. So your door doesn't look completely washed out with one color. And then although this isn't a premium sound system in the premium plus, you get this pretty funky design on your speakers. I think it looks pretty cool. Style wise, there's so many little touches on this vehicle that just make it really, really special. Um, of course, I did mention that this is available. So this green one and then our two silver ones are on the lot and for sale. And they're priced at $47,995 Canadian. And they do qualify for the uh, federal rebate of $5,000. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right, now we'll answer some questions in true live format. I'm gonna and grab my iPad just so I can read them. I lost my glasses this weekend. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> Ryan, if you're still on and you know who to reach out to about the lost and I found. Lost my glasses. <laughs> yeah. We don't know where it is either. We don't know. It could be in the Elantra N, in the Telluride, <laughs> in any car, really. But yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Gabby, what is your nail polish color? It looks greenish. It's, it's very blue. <gasps> Ryan, yes, they are brown framed. Oh, my goodness. Tell me Ryan has them. Oh my goodness, that would be iconic. Ryan stole your glasses. <laughs> um, and then I also saw Benny said, is there any markup on this car? No. So at our dealership, no, I should say. Yes. There is a common theme in a lot of Ontario Kia dealers where they are charging over MSRP. I'm happy to say Brinford Kia does not. So we sell at list price. You do have to pay taxes and fees, of course, but no markups. Thank you, Ryan. You said, I'll try and get them for oh, you. I thought he was going to say, I got them. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, when does the 2024 Soul come out? So we should be getting some in the next couple months. Uh, right now what we have is still 2023s mm -hmm. though, so we're working our way there. Um, how can you tell whether a car has wired or wireless CarPlay? So I can tell you for Kia and Hyundai at least, can't speak for other manufacturers, but right now all of our vehicles that have the eight inch touchscreen are wireless for 2022 mm -hmm. and newer. So. 
between now or then and now, they're wireless. Um, any screen that's bigger than that though, so think the 10 and a quarter inch screen or the 12.3 inch display, they are wired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you want to show the LCD TFT? Yes, okay. Um, it's hard to show the difference. Be oh, actually, I think the Sorento has the um, TFT cluster. So, usually when they say LCD, it is a fully digital screen. So, like the Nero that we just showed, everything is a screen and everything can change. So, let's turn this car on. You see our gauges, everything. Oh, it's going to beep for a little bit. Um, everything is a screen. Now, it's not touch screen or anything, but it is fully digital. There's no little center digital area with analog displays. Now, if I go to the Sorento that's beside, it'll have a little section that's fully digital, but the rest of it will have some analog components. Let's hop in. Oh, it's a tight squeeze. Oh, wait, never mind. This is a fully loaded one. Okay, we'll go to this used Santa Fe. Okay, so on the Santa Fe, this is a TFT cluster. So this area is digitized and then the rest is analog. So of course this isn't in any of our modern cars. This one is a 2017, but that's what you'd be looking at. So a smaller digital section. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, Ian posted a question asking how long the charger or the cable is. I just laid it out here. I do not have a measuring tape on me, but you can see that it goes through the bulk of our media room. It's not stretched out or anything like that. <laughs> this is so official. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. <laughs> it's long. That's our <laughs> official verdict on it. Okay. <laughs> Your Kia and Hyundai channel, or Kia and Hyundai experts, for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't ask us to measure anything. Yeah. We'll stick to specs. Um, Ryan said, fix your mic. It sounds like popcorn. Uh, that was the popcorn sound. Oh, Charlotte. Could be me at the bubble wrap. I think so, yeah. My bad. <laughs> um, do you get free or discounted charging as a new owner? Unfortunately, we have no incentives for charging at this point. Uh, does this vehicle have a surround view monitor? Also, can you explain what that is? It's hard to explain when I don't have a vehicle that has it right now, but I'll try my best. So our surround view monitor is essentially a 360 camera. There'll be a camera in the front of the vehicle, in the grill, and then two on the side underneath your mirrors. And then you'll also have, of course, your backup camera. When you throw your vehicle into park, on your main um, display, you'll see a full 360 view of everything around your vehicle. It's a great safety feature to have. It typically also has um, forward parking sensors as well, so you'll get real indicators and then of course your live feed. All right, let's see. Oh, there's a lot of questions. Does this car come with two years Electrify America? So we're in Canada. I don't have the, the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I, I I have no idea. A uh, question from earlier is, does it have the left and right turn camera? This one does not, no. What is the Just old- Just the beepings, oh. my apologies. <laughs> it's all good. Um, what is the oldest order for a Sorento SX PHEV that are still waiting for delivery? They're, they're old. Um, <laughs> I wanna say they're close to two years now. So definitely over a year and a half. Um, Sorento PHEV, doesn't matter the tram, has been one of our hardest battles. Mm -hmm. Anything PHEV, that's been uh, particularly uh, that just seems to be what everyone wants, PHEV, because yeah. you, you really get the best of both worlds with it. Mm. Um, you said before, if you have a key in your pocket and you stand near the trunk hatch, it'll open. Can you turn that feature off? Absolutely, you can. It's great for some people. It doesn't make sense for others. We personally aren't. I don't like it at the dealership because I'll be talking to a customer about a car, walk up to it as I'm standing there talking, and it opens up, and I'm, this is not what I want. So you can absolutely turn that off. Oh, Pat Hart tapped in. He said our oldest PHEV order is January 2022. I don't know why he typed in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I like how the J is lowercase, yeah. though. <laughs> all right, Turn thank your you. caps lock off. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> um, let's see. Lots of questions today. Yeah, it's great. Mm. 
Let's see, how long is the wait time for a 2023 Sportage X-Line Limited? So that's a tricky question. Um, depending on what color you're looking for, we can have them much sooner. Pat's actually here. So Pat, please weigh in if you have any insight or if we have anything available at this point. Because Caps Lock was on and I'm feeding the baby. <laughs> oh my. Icon alert, Pat Hart. Oh, um, we got a couple of people ask, um, saying to like this um, live stream. Please do. And if not for just the fact that we've got a couple comments about it. Yeah. It was Pat's birthday yesterday, and I think it'll make him really happy yeah. if you guys like the live stream. Happy birthday, Pat. <laughs> happy birthday. Grand Pat. Grand Pat. The grandest <laughs> Pat. <laughs> um, oh, um, this might be, we should probably end off on questions, but I definitely want to answer this one. What is the difference between lane following assist and lane keeping assist? And that is a great question because everyone gets those two confused. Most of our vehicles have two separate buttons for them, so it's easy to distinguish. But if not, this is what you do. Um, lane follow assist looks like a little steering wheel with two lanes beside it or a lane on each mm -hmm. side. And that's going to see the upcoming changes of the road ahead of you. So if there's a curve in the road or even if it's a straight road, it's going to follow the guidelines of the road. So it's steering for you. It's an assistance. Lane keep assist is going to almost ping pong you in your lane. If you change lanes without signaling, it'll beep at you, it'll freak out. Um, if you go to take an exit off a uh, off ramp on the highway and you don't signal, it'll also beep at you. So little things like that. Um, yeah, those are the differences. You can use them together, you can use one or the other, you can turn them both off. All right, I know that's still probably confusing. We need, <laughs> right. we need to do a video on it. An updated one. Yes, an updated one. Um, Patrick Hart, Gabby, or B. <laughs> Do we know if the Ionics will get an updated OS like the um, one this car has? I don't know. So typically, Kia and Hyundai do updates twice a year, usually in the fall and the spring. I don't know what that update is going to cover, but once we get it, we'll, of course, update our cards, and if there's any changes, we'll make a YouTube video about yep. it. Which is nice and easy. Yep. Um, let's see. Okay, only 50% like. I know, Dale, what's going on? I guess they don't want to say happy birthday to Pat. <laughs> um, if you're watching this right now, please like this video. It'll make Pat so happy. Happy 40th, Pat. Yeah, I'm... there you go. <laughs> yeah, he's 40. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, do you think we should end off today's video? Yeah, we're at about 33 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ashley, I want to shout out Coach Swissy. Thank you. Thank you. For using the uh, super chat features. Again, something that's new to us. Mm -hmm. It's a little bizarre, but you guys. We are learning it with everyone else. <laughs> yes, we, we are learning it. Um, so they said, I never got to see the confetti intro. I love this channel, learning about one of my favorite car brands. We're awesome. so happy. <laughs> we're glad you are learning. That's the point. Yes, we're all learning, to be honest. Um, but if you have any video requests or any questions you have, let us know and we can definitely try to make a video about it. Mm -hmm. See if we can help out a little more. Uh, I think that's it for today. All right. Well, on that note, thank you everyone so much for tuning in and we will see you soon. Yep. Ciao, ciao. Bye.